the sword of the spirit versus the lightsaber of the apostates. What on earth am I talking about? Well, I'm going to show you just kind of an illustration thing here today. Uh, what's going on with the Bible version issue. If he's in chapter 6, verse 17, I'm going to read that very quick from the Word of God, King James Bible. It says, And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Spiritually, a Christian is to be a soldier for Jesus Christ, and your offensive weapon is the Word of God. It's a lowercase w, by the way. It's the written Word of God, not the manifest Word, which is a capital W. Okay, get the difference there. You are to have a sword to go out into battle. Now I have here with me two types of swords. I have this one, a broad sword, a double-edged battle sword. It weighs about five pounds. And I have this one here, a newer, more modern, updated. And this one even lights up, makes sounds and everything. Isn't that neat? See, this is the new one. I'm going to talk more about that here as we continue. But what do I mean by lightsaber? Why would I call the new versions like the NIV, why would I call it a lightsaber? Well, this is why. Designer Bibles. You know, this old style is no good anymore. You can't, you know, I mean, it's almost 400 years old now. 400 years old next year. Happy birthday to the King James Version. Early birthday. But we need to get rid of that old black cover and the gold gilt edge. We need to get rid of that and come out with new designer Bibles. See, they're a lot more stylish. They're not a lot neater looking, you know, and not nearly as offensive to the lost world. I mean, these are the kinds of things, this is the kind of junk that you can sell the lost world and they'll buy it for their kids because, you know, it has lots of nice little information in it and everything. Uh-huh. This stuff right here is garbage okay but let me show you some examples of this all right let's say you go out onto the battlefield which you're supposed to do as a christian okay you are a soldier for jesus christ you have the sword of the spirit here or the lightsaber of the apostates let's say you decide to take out an niv because it's more appealing to the lost world you need to think about that now you meet a jehovah's witness and the Jehovah's Witness says, I don't believe that Jesus Christ is God. Well, if you have the sword of the Spirit, you can take him to 1 Timothy 3.16, which says, God was manifest in the flesh. But now, if you have the lightsaber of the apostates, you go to 1 Timothy 3.16, it says, He who appeared in a body. You can't prove that Jesus Christ was and is God from an NIV in 1 Timothy 3.16. You can't prove it. See, he who appeared in a body, that doesn't mean anything. I appeared in a body. You appeared in a body. Doesn't mean a thing. God was manifest in the flesh. Sword of the Spirit. Lightsaber of the apostates. Next we'll go to Revelation chapter 1 verse 11. Revelation 1 11 in the King James Version says, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. Jesus Christ speaking. Now, if he was just a man, he couldn't be the first and the last. He couldn't be Alpha and Omega. Okay, that's a title for God. The NIV omits that phrase from Revelation 1.11. So again, you take this thing out to a sword fight, a spiritual sword fight, and you will lose. Okay? Now, let's say you, you face a Roman Catholic, and you try to explain to the Roman Catholic that salvation is a finished work, once and done, by grace, through faith, you're saved right now. And so you take them to your King James Bible. 1 Corinthians 1.18 says, Us which are saved. But you decide to use the lightsaber of the apostates and you come along and you say, 1 Corinthians 1.18 says, us who are being saved. Hmm. Roman Catholic readings in the NIV. Why is that? Well, you know, study the issue. I have other videos on the subject. Partly translated at a Roman Catholic university, promoted by the Roman Catholic Church, and it comes from the Nestle's text, which is made under the supervision of the Vatican all documented facts in my other videos. Watch them. But you say, oh, that's just one. Come on, don't make a big deal. All right, 2 Corinthians 2.15. Sword of the Spirit says, them that are saved. Salvation is a finished work, according to the King James Bible, the Sword of the Spirit. Lightsaber of the Apostates. 
those who are being saved. Again, they say being saved instead of are saved. All right, Revelation chapter 21, 24, speaking of heaven, the new heavens and new earth. Okay, it says the nations of them which are saved go into the holy city. Okay, the nations of them which are saved. NIV says the nations. They removed of them which are saved. See, the NIV is not about updating archaic English or whatever. It's about destroying vital doctrine and leaving you defenseless. You take this thing out onto a battlefield into some kind of a fight, and excuse me for being blunt, but you're going to get your butt kicked. Okay? You take this thing out, you got a good chance. All right? I would not want to face somebody holding this thing in battle, a five-pound broadsword coming at me. Let's continue on. But now you're continuing to, to debate the Catholic, okay? And you talk about confessing to a priest is wrong. Well, now if I have the sword of the Spirit, I can take him to James 5.16 and say, well, see, here it says confess your faults. But if I have the lightsaber of the apostates, it says confess your sins. Ooh, that's a big problem. You're not supposed to confess your sins to a man, okay? There's one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. You don't need a priest, okay? Ephesians 3, 14, King James Bible, I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Sword of the Spirit. Lightsaber of the apostates. I kneel before the Father. It's exactly what Roman Catholics do. I've seen tons of pictures of them. I've seen them do it. I've walked into Catholic churches. I've seen them do it. They kneel before the Father. Oh, you know, forgive me, Father, for I have sinned, you know, talking to a dirty pedophile that just molested a kid, you know, an hour ago. And you forgive me, Father, for I have sinned. Right. Uh-huh. But now, what happens if you face a Bible critic? One of the favorite things that an atheist or just a, a lost person, they will bring up the fact that there are three different accounts of the inscription on the cross above Jesus Christ. Well, how do you answer that? They say, well, this is contradiction. See, the Gospels contradict. Well, if you have a, the sword of the Spirit, King James Bible, you take them to Luke chapter 23, verse 38, which says, And a superscription also was written over him in letters of Greek and Latin and Hebrew, representing the three races of man, by the way. This is the king of the Jews. But you pick up your lightsaber of the apostates, more modern, up-to-date, newer, you know, yeah, and it says, there was a written notice above him which read, this is the king of the Jews. So they took it out. Why would the NIV translators take out a critical verse which enables you to answer the lost world? Why would they take that out? They didn't update it. There's nothing archaic about what was written there. Why are they taking it out? Very interesting. Hebrews 4.12 says, for the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. You take this thing out into spiritual warfare, preaching on the street, door to door, witnessing to somebody at your job, witnessing to people that you meet out in public, whatever. This thing will discern their thoughts. Okay, it will pierce through and hit them in areas. You'll have people that will laugh at you when you quote scripture and they'll go home and cry about it. Why? It's a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. It will tell them exactly what their problem is. That's why the unsaved world hates this book. And that's why the devil wants to come out with corrupt counterfeits. Because he wants to disarm you. This scares him. Okay, this would scare a weapon is what evil people are afraid of. Good people aren't afraid of weapons, by the way. Think about that one. But this kind of thing here, and this is more powerful than this. But you see, if you take this sword, this thing will cut through that paper like that. It's sharp. And you need to have your knowledge of Scripture sharp that you can quote Scripture in verses. But now, what happens if you have a newer, more updated, 
modern lightsaber. Much easier to carry, much less offensive. But it won't cut anything. So, oh, I forgot to turn it on. Nope. Nope, didn't work. I want to have a sword that will work in battle. I don't want a lightsaber that will get me beat up out on the battlefield. I want the sword of the spirit that God has used and blessed for almost 400 years. That's my suggestion to you. King James Bible, don't fool with the other ones. Thank you for watching.